I don't know why it keeps bouncing back and forth between the microphones being weird this morning. So anyway, I have nodes, but no tokens. Where can I hook up with people that have tokens, but no nodes? Okay. So um, if that's the situation, you would use hyper pools. We just talked about that in the last this week in hypercycle, which uh, is yesterday. So go watch that episode and Tufi explains what the hyper pools are. They're not rolling out yet. They're working on contract audits and all that kind of stuff, but soon. So not, you know, not, not so far away. So that's good. Yay. All right. Uh, other, I'll just go as I get, I have a question. When the nodes, when the node splits, and of course I have 1,024 tokens, will it give you another uh, 1,020? No. The node will then be two nodes of 512 tokens. And then those will split. And then you would have four nodes. Huh? We had 512. 256. And it splits again. And it splits again. After it splits 10 times, you would have 1,024 nodes of one token each. And 10 is the most amount of splits that a single node can do because then each one token powers one node. Of course, if you were making, let's do some quick math. If you were making $5 a day per node, I don't, just let's say you have a node, you're making five bucks a day. Woo woo. And then it splits and you have 1,024 nodes. So now you're making five times 1,024. Right? Is everybody with me? So you see how that works. So now you're making what? 1,120? Something like that? Ballpark? Um, yeah, sorry, 5,120 a day? Anyway, that's so that's so you can imagine if you had X amount of nodes, once it splits 10 times, you now have 1,024 times X amount of nodes. That's why it pays to be early. Be early, my friends. Be early. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So, uh, is the launch of... So the project... Oh, yeah. So the project that we're talking about, uh, that we were talking about on the early bits, let me show you. Boop. So this is Node Market. <clears throat> and what NodeMarket.io is, is it's a place where you'll be able to go to list and sell your nodes you be able to go buy nodes. you be able to look at the metrics, like to see how they're rated. All of that stuff will be there. It'll be a marketplace for nodes, right? You may want, you may get it. Somebody might want to buy a house or a Ferrari or whatever. And they might have been uh, running their nodes for a while. They've gotten a couple of splits. Those nodes have more value as tilling and compute goes into the marketplace because you have, uh, a compute score, an uptime score, and a reputational score. And so all of these nodes are going to be at various stages of performance once the network goes live. And so that being said, you may want to buy or sell node or nodes in the, in the along that lifespan. Uh, or you may never want to sell them because you're just making money and you don't – anyway – um, but if you do want to, so this is what one, this is half of what it is. You'll notice also the little button that says buy node license. You, if you click on that, if you go to nodemarket.io, matter of fact, I'll show you. If you go here, this is where you would list a node. Again, this is not active yet. We're waiting for some contract, uh, some smart contract data from HyperCycle. So you can't explore or list or buy nodes yet. But the second you can, this is where you will go to do it. Then what you can do right now, the second, well, you could check the gas. This is the uh, uh, current uh, real-time Ethereum gas. So if you just want to check that, that there, oh, it's 38. Damn it. Anyway, if you want to buy node licenses, you just click buy node licenses and look where you end up. Um, if you go to nickblacknext.com uh, and you go to the store, this is the, or the, the shop. We're in the shop, right? So there you see a 32 node license and an eight node license if you click on like the eight one or 32 you click it the you'll notice that the price per node is a little bit cheaper um it's five dollars per node cheaper 
the price out there right now, just so you guys know that everybody kind of agrees, it's like 120, 120 bucks per node per singles. You know, you'll notice that these are actually uh, 110 and these are 115. So we're a little bit cheaper than the market. Um, so there you go. So then when you look at it, you're like, what in the smoke is this? This is 32 hypercycle node licenses. Um, you add it to the cart and off you go. It is that. Then um, once that is successful and you've done that, you've done the purchase, you're going to get an NFT that's like a placeholder NFT. And um, it's going to say 32 nodes. It's really pretty and all this. And then when they give us all of the tools to break those nodes down, to um, take them and split them into singles and all that kind of stuff, you'll have that. So that's great. Okay. Um, that's that part. Let me talk real quick because this may come up too about the devices. I think someone had asked about those. Uh, let me see. No. When you first marry tokens to a node to turn a node license on, you will marry 1,024 tokens with each node license. But once they start going and any splits that occur, they're going to break in half, meaning half the tokens per node, half the tokens per node, half the tokens per node. Yes. Bam. We're nailing it. We're crushing it today on data. Okay. Hello. 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 Let's get through these lows. Yeah, I know the, the sound. Yeah, that's, that was me. The sound got all screaming at me, screaming through my ears. Hello, hello, hello. Um, since this is the freebie schmeebie show and we have like 76 people, can you just click the like button? You notice you don't see any crappy YouTube commercials, that weirdo that talks about tchotchkes and all this kind of stuff. No, we don't have that. All we ask for is your digital likes. We're very simple people. We're simple people of simple simple means. Hello, 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 hello. We're gonna get through them all. I have to click every GD button on here. Um, we're gonna talk about a few things today, other than just your questions. Um, yeah, our sound is back. Our sound is back. Yay, yay, yay! We're going. We're moving. We're rocking and rolling. Okay, where is the recording? Which recording? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, I'm buying a bunch of new gear. Don't worry about my mouth being in sync. Just pretend this is an AI. How about that? Pretend it's an AI and you're good. Yay. Uh, last night I dreamed I was living in hypercycle cloud city. Yeah, that would be a badass city. It would probably work really good. Um, Yeah, if you think about numbers like that, it makes your head kind of go. I mean, almost anything, if you're around in the beginning and it takes off and you're successful, then you get you win. Um, I think opportunities are best if you're early. <laughs> That's the whole point of digital private client is be early. When can we get Node? You can get Node now, buddy, right there. I think we've already talked about it. Um, where are the node units? Where will they be stored? I'm guessing, Joseph. Um, well, you will have them. The minute we get the code to separate them, you will just go, you'll get them. They'll be sent to you and you'll just do whatever you want with them. If you get node licenses from us, you're not obligated to keep them with us. We don't own your shit. It's your shit. Your stuff is yours, not ours. Um, and to clear the... the there is no beta, right? That's kind of a thing. Um, there is the various stages of HyperCycle, the company rolling out their software, their technology, their code, their dApps that make, make it easier for people to do stuff. There's no actual beta program. I think that's like a Cryptopia thing, which is cool, but there's not. that's not an official thing. That's a Cryptopia thing, which is great. But there's no actual beta anything. There is just they will roll out the software and the code when it has been audited and it is ready for public uh, fingers. That makes sense? Okay, great. Bam. And yes, very live. So live. Um, who gets the money we pay for nodes? It's, uh, well, uh, indirectly, uh, we get it. 
but before we got it, it was we purchased big bundles of nodes from Hypercycle, and they have this long schedule. Um, basically, every master node license, which is 512 that sells, they get more expensive by a few bucks. And so that's why you're going to see prices start to slowly escalate in the node license market. Um, and that's also one of the original revenue streams to finance Hypercycle, the company, before they had raised money with the token sale. They sell the licenses, which allow us to participate in their business-to-business -business proposition of selling compute. They have big clients they sell compute to. We, as node license owners, get to participate in that ecosystem of compute, and that's why you get paid uh, own, owning a license that has tokens in it. That's how it works. Bam. And yes, you do not have to be a member of Digital Investor to buy nodes. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but you don't have to be. Yes. Uh, okay. Need an email with an invite. Yeah, you don't, I don't know what that is um, referring to. Okay. Uh, Oh, it's it's not heavyweight. That so digital heavyweight is is that's over with. Um, there is only digital investor, and that's the three days a week of behind the wall stuff. Then there's digital private client, which is um, the really really early early investment stuff, and that's for accredited investors only. Sorry, bam. Uh, let's see. If you buy more nodes, will they join a reputation with the original nodes you bought? No. So the way it works is, well, right now, everybody's even. You can buy a node right now. You could have bought a node six weeks ago. Same, same. It's once tilling officially begins and then, and then compute kicks in. So the minute tilling begins, you're building your reputation score. Like the second that you can till, reputation is being built. And then from then on, what happens is once compute kicks in, then you have compute, uptime, reputation. But right now, tilling is basically telling the network that you're available to participate. It's saying, I'm here, fellas, throw, kick, kick, kick me down some, some compute tasks. But there's no compute tasks yet because they're, again, they're building out this, this system. And it, this is an 18-month process. We're only four, like tomorrow, it's officially four months into an 18 month rollout. So again, you gotta just relax, go relax everyone, relax. Um, but it's from when you first start, uh, you've activated your node to be actually tilling and then eventually compute. So you could have bought nodes six weeks ago or right now. And since you can't turn them on this second, they would all be equal. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, Frank, I passed Frank's question. Uh, let's see. If you sell them, do your tokens go with them? Well, <clears throat> you may or may not. You may sell them with your tokens. I mean, if that was the case, you would just add the price of those tokens in with those nodes. So that makes sense. Um, so you would just, let's say that the hypercycle token was a buck and you had a node to sell and it was before it had split. You would just say, okay, here's what I think the price is. And again, you'll be able to see at, at hyper. Uh, so in this secondary market at nodemarket.io, you'll be able to see where your node ranks among the others. You'll be able to get an average kind of price of what, what the value would be. And then you can determine what you, and listen, no one's obligated to buy or sell anything. You can sit on your stuff forever, but I would just look at it and go, okay, that node has this reputation. It's worth about this and the tokens are worth this, here's my price, right? Um, seems like you'd want to leave it in there just earning money until, until you sold it. Now, there are a lot of people who are buying licenses just to flip them. Hey, man, licenses are a commodity too. There's only going to be 2.1 million or so of those bad boys. Licenses are a commodity. So that's a, if that's your game, if you want to be a, a license squatter, is that a new term now? Uh, node license squatter. We just coined it. Hey, good on you. I, I'm not against it. I might do it myself. Anyway, um, yes, it's picks and shovels if you just want to participate in the buying and flipping of that stuff. Yeah. Um, 
how do we find out from HyperCycle who will be purchasing compute from them? I believe they're keeping a lot of that quiet uh, for obvious reasons. Many of those companies may have NDAs. Um, and many of those companies may have may have NDAs even once all of this goes live. So some of them will be public and some of them will not. And they'll I'm guessing that they will they'll tell us who they are when they are allowed to or when they think probably that they're closer to rolling out compute. I've heard some rumors in the calls among the team, but uh, I'm not going to talk out of turn. What is that? The, is that the phrase? Talk out of school? Talk out of whisper? Ah, whatever. Um, so anyway, yeah, until they, they'll make official announcements when they think it's best for them to make official announcements. I mean, I don't speak for, for the executive branch at HyperCycle, but there are many people that are much smarter than me and they know what they're doing. So I just trust. I trust. Trust but verify. Um, let's see. Where to, uh, to find the recording for the paid description? While I don't know what that is, man. I'm not sure what you're asking for. Um, <clears throat> John asks, Nick, do you have the hardware available? Okay. Um, if you go get on the mailing list, so let me go here. Boop. Get on the mailing list. You don't have to spend any money. It's free. Free mailing list. Yay. Free. Listen, email list for free tech tips. One of the other tech tips or one of the other, one of the emails that's going out today is so that people that want to get in line for the hyper AI box can actually put their name down to Google Docs link that goes directly to the HyperCycle team that puts you um, in line to get one of the boxes. They are, we think, roughly 1200 bucks each. And I'll tell you, since we're talking about it, what they will handle. The boxes, it looks like, will handle for tilling an entire master node, 512 nodes, <clears throat> for tilling tilling. Now, once compute comes, I think those boxes are only going to be fit for somewhere between two and maybe 10 nodes. Because again, there's the compute requirements. But you could be tilling, you could be raising your uptime all the way until then. Um, and then this would be, okay, so for the subscription to digital investor, that would just be right, you would just go to Nick Black next, just like on the top of the screen.com. And then um, you can just get an annual or a six month or a monthly. Easy peasy. Um, okay. Uh, I haven't got enough tokens yet. Do you have an idea when we sh um, win? No, but even if you don't have tokens, those of you, listen, if you have licenses, you'll be able to pledge just the licenses into the pool and earn off of those. Keep that in mind. Um, so those of you that don't, let's say you have a, some licenses, but you don't have enough tokens, you're fine. You'll be able to pledge those if you want to at, into the hyper pools. That's what Tufi was talking about yesterday on the episode of This Week in HyperCycle. You'll be able to pledge those and get and basically get paid for that. Um, in my opinion, it would be better to be a participant in like splitting and the doubling and the tokens and all that, but you don't have to. You can, if you have any part of the equation, whether it's compute hardware and resources, uh, whether it's AI code, uh, whether it's um, the, the node licenses or whether it is the tokens themselves or some combination of those, you'll be able to pledge those into the hyper pool and earn currency units. Woo woo. All right, uh, let's see. I've subscribed to the email list and not gotten anything yet. Well, that's because Brandon is an abject failure. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, you may want to check your junk mail because if you subscribe to the thing, it's it automatically puts you on the list. It's not. We don't have like someone like clicking buttons. It's like it it happens, Debbie. So you're on the list. You just may want to, I guess, check your your filter settings. Yeah. Okay. Do I have to have a box in order to start tilling? No, you could pledge your license and tokens that got married together to somebody else's equipment, to somebody else's hardware. You could pledge them into um, the hyper pool that we just talked about. You may even be able to do something with hyper PG and that's the hypercycle penguin uh, partnership. Um, there will be plenty of places to go for everybody. It's just that right now, 
um, a lot of people are like, well, if it's just tilling and I'd like to get my, my licenses up and running, then maybe it makes sense to grab a box. I'm going to get a box just to have it because it's cool. And it also like puts out a little heat. It's like a little, it's not super hot. But it's like a little, like a little baby space heater. And I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot to heat. So I, sp I spend my money and I didn't spend my money. I guess that's, that's why I have money. You don't spend it, you have it. All right. Uh, Howard asks, if I set up a system using some of the node licenses I bought from DI and the Hyperbox backed up with mechanical and solar power, oh, that's cool. That's a good idea. I mean, I don't know if that's, that's a question. I think that's a statement. Are you asking if that's a good idea? I mean, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that if you had solar, like a – they, I used to know these dudes that were trying to get solar panels to run their mining rigs. If they ever got that working, they're killing it because that's just absolutely free money. So, yeah, maybe that's like a whole new thing, Howard. You could like be the dude that sells the solar – maybe I should do that. Maybe I should shut up. But anyway, the solar panel that powers the rig so that you're literally creating currency units for free by converting electrons from, from – or a light photons. Ah, ah, look at you coming up with business ideas. Um, we're to go and watch the missing video for the paid subscription. Uh, man, the, okay, listen, if you're a digital investor, you get those videos. You, you, there's a whole dashboard with all sorts of tools that digital investors have like tons and tons of, of tools and calculators and this is and that's and wallets and all sorts of stuff. That's all digital investor. So if you have a subscription, you get that and you get the content. However, you can still get free content by just joining the mailing list. If you're looking for the video, um, if you go to um, Nick Black Live, that's like the YouTube where we put out the, the, this, these like Tuesday and Thursday and like the basic content that everybody gets, you can have it for free. We just won't talk about market stuff and building portfolios and all that because it's not so much legal to do that. And if you hear people doing that, they're probably breaking the law and they just don't care because they're, they're, they're so – they don't care. All right. Um, will that build a perfect reputation? Well, for now it will. Uptime is uptime. So if you have continual uptime, that is as good a reputation as you can build right now. Then when compute tasks roll in – that's another metric. So then it's going to be compute and uptime and total reputation. And they all have a score. And as that score, it's like 1.26, 1.26, 1.26. 1 and as that score reaches the threshold of two, the node split. Whew. The boxes right now are looking like, Catherine, they're going to be about between 1000 and 1200 bucks ish um, And they're building, to my estimation, or not estimation, to my assumption from what I've heard, they're building 52,000 of them in a few locations, just in case some location doesn't like get the rigs out that they need. So yeah, there's, I think that that's the first batch is like 52,000 of these. So that's 52,000. Um, well, technically could do 52,000 master nodes. Thing is there's not 52,000 master nodes. I have the numbers actually, if you guys want to hear the numbers, let me see. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Uh, by the numbers. So the numbers are 2.147 billion total hypercycle tokens. That means 4,095, let's just call it 4,100 total master nodes. Each master node has 512 node licenses. That means there's going to be roughly 2.1 million total nodes. They're in the 260s right now of master nodes that they've sold. Um, so yeah, so they're they're about five five percent six percent of the way there. So again, about forty one hundred total master nodes, or two point one million total nodes when the when the ecosystem is completely flushed out. If that makes sense, it's a lot. Okay, um, how many boxes? Uh, how many boxes per license? It's the, it's the reverse of that, Joseph. So right now, again, it looks like. Each box for tilling only, meaning just uptime, will handle an entire master node of 512. Well, it will. It will handle a master node of 512 licenses. 
However, once compute comes into play, you have other resource requirements of that hardware. That's not going to be sustainable, and it would probably handle, say, anywhere between 2 and 10. We don't know until they start rigorously testing them with actual compute workloads, which won't come because we're not, we're not there yet. So we, we're building the ecosystem as we go. Um, okay. I think we've got most of these kinds of questions nailed. Do we have to buy a box to till? No. Again, you can post your so – I feel like we are covering this ground a lot, but you can post your tokens – or your licenses or tokens with licenses to either a private facility that's handling the compute requirements or to uh, potentially hyper PG or to the hyper pools where they'll be able to be utilized. Yay. Whew. BZ, what's up, buddy? All right. Um, yeah, there is no more digital heavyweight. If you were a digital heavyweight, go get your money back. Even if you had a lifetime membership, go get your money back. They'll give it to you. They have to because the law. All right. Currently, Thursday, September 25th. Um, by the way, we're going to talk about some fun stuff today. We're going to actually go through the five T's and talk about the thought process of the five T's and why we have this as a fundamental analysis system because you need some way to know what the hell is going on with crypto. Um, and you need to know what you own, man. Um, and along with that, that's why we do these what is. We're going to do these with every single asset that we either recommend or own or, or are interested in. So this is a good day for a hypercycle. So, all right, there's 94 of you. Uh, I mean, I guess technically we should get to the, uh, you know, classes in session type thing, which, you know, you know, I love it. Hello. You're late. You an A plus in confidence. Just doing what I gotta do. Extra credit. Okay. Everybody get your get your fingers ready. There are 95 students in the, the classroom today. Uh, <clears throat> I better see at least some. Well, I'll never see 95 likes because <laughs> there's always there's always that one de thumbs downer in here. Debbie thumbs downer. But uh I should would I should hope we get at least like 90 likes, but Classroom side. Uh, first, when we're explaining to ourselves, we did what is Bitcoin yesterday. You guys remember that. Hopefully you do. And we talked about Bitcoin and we gave our first portfolio recommendation for waiting. So let's talk about hypercycle. I'm not going to give a recommendation for waiting. I will do that tomorrow uh, with the digital investors on the private show, not public facing because jail. All right. Hypercycle enables AI systems to communicate and collaborate efficiently. Write it. Every one of you here. Hypercycle enables AI systems to communicate and collaborate efficiently. I'm going to tell you this. If you know these three things, if you memorize these three things, then you get it. The rest of it's just nuance. But you want to, you want to have this. It enables, it improves, it provides. Hypercycle enables AI systems to communicate and collaborate efficiently. Let's see it. I'm not seeing it. There we go. Nope. How can we set up inheritance? Uh, you can actually. Um, you will be able to do that, but that would be something you would do through MetaMask uh, by granting some authority. They're building all sorts of tools in MetaMask. Yes, HyperCycle enables AI systems to communicate and collaborate efficiently. I better see at least half of you write this down. HyperCycle enables AI systems to communicate and collaborate efficiently. Yes, there we go. You see, these are the ones that are going to succeed in life. Everybody else can be like, I don't understand why I can't make money in crypto. Yeah, it has nothing to do with crypto. It's about investing. It's about learning what you own. Okay. For those of you that have done part one. Now, we know you don't have to write this, but the process right now is slow and costly. That's why there's a hypercycle. That's why this exists. Okay. Part two. Hypercycle improves this by offering a secure global connection system. Now, here's the key. There's three parts to this. A secure global connection system with verifiable identities without depending on centralized parties. So this is the key. This is the key. It improves this by offering a secure global connection system 
verifiable identities without depending on centralized parties. You notice we don't depend on a ledger. We don't depend on some central group. We make a transaction and every 10 seconds we kick it up. We kick it up to some, some level of perpetuity, some chain, some ledger, some system, some record keeping, but we don't ask permission. And third, thirdly, it provides a safe platform for AI to interact directly without intermediaries. And there's some really cool phenomena that occur inside this system having to do with locality of nodes and all this. We'll get into all the guts of that. But anyway, it provides a safe platform for AI to interact directly without intermediaries. You say, why are we going over this for five minutes? Because many of us are involved in a lot of these assets like Bitcoin, which is the first one, like HyperCycle, which you may have a pretty big exposure to. And most of you have done a eight, nine hundred thousand percent return on that. Five hundred percent, two hundred. Every oh, I can't, I don't know if there's anybody that's not in the money right now. But just being in the money on the token is a very, very tiny fragment of what this is about. So you really want to you want to have a good, strong grasp of what you own and why you own it. It is muy importante. That's going to get us into, well, why would I own these things that I own? Well, that's where we come over here to my lovely list. We go down here and we grab the five T's. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to go through the five T's and then I'm going to tell you why the five T's, like why they matter. Um, most of you understand what they are, so I don't think we need a banner actually. Get rid of that thing. Um, 383 digital investors, by the way. Pretty cool. We're 38% the way there. All right. Team. Do you trust the team? Do they have experience? Are they competent? Is this just a cash grab? Technology. Is the technology viable? Does it make the world a better place? Can it achieve use, utility, and wide scale, widespread adoption? Timing. Is the token still relevant or has time passed it by? Ripple, XRP. Is it, why are they having a party? I don't understand how, they're so stupid. They're probably going to announce their IPO. Remember, an initial public offering is when early investors use you as their exit liquidity. It's not the same as the crypto space where companies are looking for funding. When a company does an IPO, initial, initial public offering, to the public, to you, in the form of equity or shares. You are their exit liquidity. Understand that. They don't need the money. And if they need the money, you don't want to give it to them. Does that make sense? So just be aware of that. Don't get caught up in, oh, it's going to IPO. If you, if it's gonna, It's just a way for early investors to exit on your neck. Anyway. So timing, is the token still relevant or has time passed it by? Is it still needed? Is the platform or business proposition valid and current? Tokenomics, who owns what? Are there lockups? How many tokens are floating around? Where are they? Do developers and insiders sell as soon as possible? That was the chain link problem. That's why I never bought into chain link because the chain link developers were selling all of their tokens. Now, if you're a developer, and you believe in the ecosystem you're building, why are you selling every effing token that you have? To me, to me, that sounds sketch as hell. So you just, if the chef won't eat at the restaurant where he's cooking and he won't eat his own food, I'm not going to eat it. Mm -hmm. And then the token, why does the token exist? Why token? Um, is the token needed to facilitate the business proposition. Why does the token even exist? This is another problem with Chainlink. You don't need the token. It, the token was just strapped on. There's no reason for it. Most tokens, there's no reason for them. I mean, like almost all of them. There is no reason for the token. The token doesn't actually function in the ecosystem. In some cases it does, but mostly it doesn't. Um, in the case of HyperCycle, a, tra a compute transaction a transaction hypercycle doesn't occur without the native token. 
And remember the tokens that we have, those are not the native tokens. Those are placeholder tokens that you will be able to trade uh, and marry into those licenses. And by the way, just a little, little factoid here. Um, when you notice the difference in hypercycle specifically of the price of the token on BNB and the price of the token on Ethereum, and it's like a 10 to 15 to 20% difference, when you take those tokens and marry them to your node license, the license doesn't know the difference because it's using the native token, not those placeholder tokens. Meaning, if you bought the token for 52 cents, or you bought the token on BNB for 42 cents. It's the same token that's going to marry with the license. So kind of think, please. You know, when, if you guys are getting tokens and, and you're just going to marry them to licenses, um, go get the cheap ones, man. <laughs> go get the cheap ones. All right. Um, cool. So now what I want to do is I want to go a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to put on another screen. I'm going to go a little bit more into the um, the headspace of. Matter of fact, do I have a cool? Eh, anyway, um, let's go a little bit more into the headspace of the five T's. <clears throat> so I have done a little bit extra detail. Let me hide that stupid little window. Come here, you. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit more in depth about the key metrics that we use for evaluating cryptocurrency investment. And those are our five T's. I'll put up the basic 5T banner. I have like a little basic-y, basic-y one. Okay, so the benefit of using these metrics to measure cryptocurrency, basically as an investor, it's crucial that, that you know, you have, well, ideally a comprehensive understanding of like the metrics used to measure a cryptocurrency. But really this is with any asset you'd purchase. I know somebody who's like, I, I do the four T's on, on a house that I'm buying. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, why four? He goes, because there's no token. I'm like, ah, okay, good point. So why token doesn't make much sense. Um, but, and then he turns uh, tokenomics into economics. Point is, it's a, fundament, it's a, it's a system for fundamental analysis. Well, with the rise of digital currencies, it's increasingly important to be able to evaluate each one of their potential for growth and success. And we're going to kind of explore some of the more specific metrics that we use, which is our five T's, to assess the viability of cryptocurrency. So by examining the team, the timing of the launch, the technology that's used, the token economic structure, the purpose of the token, we can make more informed investment decisions. Obviously, nobody knows the future. No one has all the money. But all you, you know, we're just trying to be a little bit more informed and educated than the other typical YOLO meme corn bullshit douchebaggy crypto investors. The cool thing is, in order to win in the crypto space, it's very easy to be smarter than about 95%. And you don't have to be smarter than 95%. You only have to be smarter than like 50%, right? So it's very easy with, with a very minimal amount of effort to be ahead of the pack, like the, to be faster than the fat kid when the bear comes to the campfire. So let's kind of dive into the metrics and talk about uh, their significance, why we kind of came up with these five T's. So one of the most, I mean, it starts with team. This is the most important of the five T's, but um, one of the most vital aspects to consider when you evaluate a cryptocurrency is the team that's behind the development of that cryptocurrency. A strong and experienced team that you trust can significantly increase the chances of a project's success. When examining the team, it's important to look at their expertise, uh, look at their track record, look at their commitment to the project, see if they've been in that space before the project, or if this is if they're just like a Johnny come lately, <laughs> hashtag uh, bread garlic mouth. A team with a solid background in blockchain technology and a history of successful projects can instill confidence for their investors. Furthermore, a team that is actively engaged and dedicated to the project's progress indicates the commitment to achieving the project's goals. Think about, think about these two teams. The team over at 
I'm not going to pick on Ripple because it's just too easy. The team at Chainlink and then the team at Cardano. The team at Cardano, building, 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 peer review, building, building, writing papers, building, building, research, 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 building. The team at Chainlink, fake partnerships, fake token, the developers and the founders sell everything they get as fast as they get it. Every time there's an unlock, they sell everything. Or building, 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 research, building papers, da, 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 like, like common sense, right? So anyway, a team that's actively engaged and dedicated to the project, like the team, at, Car at least I feel this way, like the Cardano team. Um, and like I used to feel like with Algorand, although they have S the bed since then. But it indicates that they are committed to achieving their project's goals, even if it takes a little longer, versus the dudes that sell everything as quick as they get it, um, pump a bunch of fake partnerships and have a token that doesn't even need to be in the ecosystem that they've admitted is not even necessary. You're like, why would I buy a token that's not necessary? You don't own equity. Tokens are not equity. Understand that. People think, oh, it's like I own the company. No, you don't. Equity is equity. Equity is equity. Tokens are not equity unless it's a security token. No one, no one knows what the hell that even means right now. Anyway, additionally, the team's ability to adapt and navigate an ever-changing cryptocurrency landscape, especially if you think about regulation, is super crucial. The cryptocurrency market, as everybody here knows, well, let me ask you, what do you think? Give me a uh, volatile or not volatile. What do you think in the cryptocurrency market? Is it a volatile or not volatile marketplace? Anybody that answers not volatile, you're in the, you are probably high, you're smoking meth with my grandma, or you're uh, unaware. If you don't think this is volatility, or you're just like a Vietnam sniper with cast iron stomach. Anyway, um, the market is incredibly volatile. And a team that can effectively respond to market trends and challenges is much more likely to achieve longer-term success. So by analyzing the team's capabilities, their ability to execute a well-defined roadmap, investors can gain valuable insights into the potential of that crypto asset. Again, this all falls back on the team. Um, you want to think about the team's transparency, their communication strategy with the community. So look at the two, look at Algorand and Cardano. At their high, they both got to about three bucks twenty cents. So they both touched the same highs. But Algorand has since gone <laughs> under ten cents. Cardano's still in the mid twenties. You think that's it's a distinction without a difference? Nope, it's a big difference. The Cardano team continues to pump out code. Look at their GitHub. Look at their submits. They continue to innovate, push forward. There's engagement with the community. Charles Hoskinson, always communicating, always communicating. Okay? And then there's Algorand. Hold on. I think I have a cricket sound. Hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's, do, the, uh, let's, let's do the communication strategy. This is the Algorand. This is the official Algorand communication strategy. That's good, isn't it? That's their strategy. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. So, man, I don't know why they don't get this. Seems, seems pretty damn simple, but they do not. So, team is the most important thing. Transparency fosters trust. It enables people like us to make well-informed decisions. If the team won't communicate, they won't, they won't have a strong like social media presence. Honestly, F them. F them. Don't give them your money. They're going to squander it. That's what they've done. Um, so evaluate the team behind a cryptocurrency project. That is the most important part of the potential for its success. Then you look at the timing. This is pretty important too. So timing plays a very crucial role in the success of any, well, in any investment, it's timing, right? Um, and in the world of cryptocurrency, obviously not any different. Um, matter of fact, it's probably more important. So understanding the market timing of a cryptocurrency project can provide a bunch of like really good insight into its potential growth. So we're always looking like, you know, 12, 18, 36 months 
into the future. We're trying to, at least till the robots come. Um, we're analyzing the current market conditions. We're looking at the trends, right? And we're looking at overall sentiment, which becomes more a macro play. And this can help us identify opportunities and also risks, macro risks, things like that, short-term supply risks, the, the micro. So it's essential to evaluate the timing of each project. Look at the timing of their launch. For instance, twin protocol. Twin is, is waiting, it seems to me, until the market changes shape a little bit, until it starts to pivot and starts to be more kind of positive and engaging. And I think that's a good thing. I wouldn't launch into this crap right now, but unless you have, you know, unless you're just desire, unless you need money so bad, that's another thing. Then it would go back to the team and say, wait a minute, but launching a project during a market upswing or during a period of increased interest in the industry can generate very positive momentum. So conversely, uh, launching during a market downturn or when the industry is experiencing a decline or when the macroeconomic landscape is dog crap, it may hinder a project's growth, even if the project is a good idea. You do not want that. Moreover, assessing the timing of a regu of kind of the regulatory landscape, right? Like uh, if you're looking at the SEC right now, they're stacking up more losses than wins right now. So the regulatory climate probably looks better than it did six, eight weeks ago. That being said, it's still the SEC, still the government. Anyway, governments and regulatory bodies around the world are still in the process of trying to define what their stance is on cryptocurrency. So keep an eye on these developments. Um, keep an eye on, is that team keeping an eye on these developments? Okay. And then, uh, you know, you can anticipate the regulatory hurdles that you might be faced with. Yeah, that stuff is good. Uh, I mean, again, you're just you're guessing and spitballing, but that's the key. Um, all right, let's talk technology. When evaluating a cryptocurrency project, the underlying technology is a crucial factor to consider. The technology behind um, the various projects determines their functionality, their security, their potential for scalability. Uh, a robust and innovative technology stack can differentiate a crypto asset from its competitors, and it can increase the chances of its adoption. Again, why I was so excited about Hypercycle and why I am less excited about some of the other projects um, because they don't seem as – the technology stack doesn't seem as solid as what they're doing with Toda IP and Earth64 and like all the stuff that goes – all of the – all the bits of the sausage that is Hypercycle. Um, as investors, we need to assess the technical aspects of a cryptocurrency – uh, such as the consensus mechanism, scalability solutions. Uh, when they talk about consensus mechanism, that's when they just talking about finding agreement, right? Uh, scalability solutions, smart contract capabilities, a consensus mechanism that is secure, that is efficient and uh, decentralized, again, without centralized parties, is more essential to ensure the integrity of the cryptocurrency's transactions. Remember, when you have a controlled when a controlling central party like Amazon or Microsoft or something like that, they are the arbiters of what transactions are real and not and what can be reversed and not. Does that make sense? So um, if you're looking like at scalability solutions, such as layer two protocols, sharding, ZK snarks, rollups, all this kind of cool privacy stuff, are they necessary to handle increased transaction volume? If so, are they building out that ecosystem? Does it help to reduce fees or is it just another way for more people to put money in their pocket? Um, a cryptocurrency with robust smart contract capability, um, it opens up a lot more opportunity for decentralized applications like dApps and wider um, global adoption. We're always looking for projects that have use, utility, and the potential for wide-scale adoption, right? So – uh, consider the development activity, the level of community support for the different cryptocurrencies, uh, technologies, uh, look at regular updates, bug fixes, um, improvements, and that demonstrates that the development community is active and that they're continuing to push code and they're, and they're paying attention uh, to like what's going on in their ecosystem. Um, a vibrant developer community is good, but also a vibrant 
social community that actively supports the project and can contribute to its success by spreading awareness, driving adoption, um, explaining to people what the project is and isn't. That's like, what is Bitcoin? What is, you know, what is, what is it? Tell grandma what you own so that she's not looking, looking at you like you're, you know, insane. Anyway, um, analyzing the technology behind a cryptocurrency is crucial for, eva for evaluating potential growth. Okay. Uh, tokenomics. Tokenomics or token economics refers to the economic model and distribution of a cryptocurrency's tokens uh, or coins, depending on how they call them. Uh, understanding the tokenomics of a cryptocurrency project is essential for assessing long-term viability. If they haven't thought of this, run for the hills, right? The tokenomic structure and how the tokens are released, how the network is built and how the ecosystem will flourish. These should have been considerations that they thought about before they launched. If they were not design considerations, that's a problem. All right. Um, so they are essential for the long-term viability and potential return on your currency units. You traded minutes of your life, seconds for minutes, minutes for hours that you took the those currency units, you punted them into a market, and you hope that that team is deserving of your of your breaths. That's what you traded. Investors should analyze factors such as the token supply, which we just talked about, like for HyperCycle, right? For Bitcoin, what is the total token amount that will ever be? Anyone? Quickly, quickly. Bitcoin, how many total tokens? Forget about what's been lost. Forget about, there's a cap. I know I'll see it. I'm going to wait for the little bit of a lag there. Anyway, um, analyze the token supply. Look at the distribution schedule, right? 21 million. Winner, winner, winners, all you winners. Will we be able to buy nodes in Twin? No, Twin doesn't work that way. Their Twin doesn't have nodes. Twin has tokens. Tokens are used to participate in the Twin ecosystem where you will train your Twins. 2.1 what? 21 million, everyone. It's 21. It's 21 million. Now, uh, just a, a quick fun tidbit on Bitcoin. Uh, about six million, six and a half million of those tokens have been lost in wallets, burn addresses, just mistakes. Gone. See you later. Bye. So about six. And here's another little factoid. There's only about a million Bitcoin available on all the public exchanges. Now, of course, obviously, as the price goes up, that unearths new sellers and things like that. But there's only about a million tokens right now uh, on the market. Kind of cool. Kind of cool to think about. Anyway, um, when you analyze token supply, token distribution, the purpose of the token, a well-designed tokenomic model would ensure a fair and equitable distribution of tokens. Again, not giving away, but a fair and equitable distribution over the timeline. It avoids excessive concentration in the hands of just a few people. It wants to disseminate these tokens for the people that want to participate. And there is a clear use case for the token. This will get into the next question here in a second. Whether it's for governance, utility, a means of value transfer, it needs to be crucial. If the token is crucial, then its long-term value is much more likely. In, in the uh, hypercycle ecosystem, you can't do a transaction without the token. There's no agreement. It's not a show of hands. Oh, let's vote. Let's this. That. No, no, no. Without the native token, there is no transaction. And if you look deeply at most of these other projects, I would say 99.999% of the entire crypto space, the token is not actually used. It's a placeholder. It's a commodity or utility, but it's not actually part of a transaction. It's not utilized in the transaction. I'm not talking about communicating a ledger balance or communicating uh, a transaction and saying, oh, this many went to Alice, this many went to Bob. In HyperCycle, the native token is actually the, the unit that trans – it's the transfer mechanism. So think about that. Anyway, uh, furthermore, the inflation rate and the token release schedule, those are pretty important considerations. So too much inflation can dilute the value – You know, like Ethereum still has a mild inflation – uh, can dilute the value of the existing tokens, while a lack of inflation may hinder network growth and adoption. 
So you want to make sure there's a well, at least that it's been thought about, that if there's a well-balanced tokenomics model um, that should strike a balance between incentivizing network participation and maintaining scarcity and the value of the token. I am less interested in the scarcity and value of the token um, in that in an, in, a, in an ecosystem that's growing, you need to have sufficient tokens to participate. In, this, in an ecosystem that's shrinking, you need to be able to get tokens out of the market. Ideally, you have some amount of expansion and contraction that can occur. So you have some degree of monetary policy or some at least that there was the thought, the thought of some kind of token tokenomics or token economic monetary policy. You would, you would hope if these, again, if the team didn't make these considerations, it's a team I don't want to be a part of, right? There is the chain link team there and there are the other ones, right? So keep that, keep, keep that in mind. Okay. So finally, why token? Understanding the purpose of a cryptocurrency's token is key to assessing its value proposition. So Every single cryptocurrency serves, well, it should serve a specific function within its ecosystem. And each of us as investors, we need to evaluate whether that token's purpose is unique or bullshit. There's really only those two things. Is it necessary? Why token? Right? Um, so we, as investors, we have to consider whether other tokens could fulfill the same function or if the project's token offers very distinct advantages very specific and unique uses. Assessing the token's utility, its governance rights, potential for value accrual, wealth creation, um, this provides insights into its long-term value, right? So evaluating the demand for a token and its potential for adoption can indicate the, what the growth potential in the market's gonna be, especially as we're building into AI. So understanding the purpose of the token and its unique value proposition, we as investors can assess whether this particular or that particular cryptocurrency has some competitive advantage over its peers or, or its industry similars and whether it's likely to thrive in this kind of ever evolving landscape of digital assets and AI melting into it, or it will just go, uh, go out to the pasture and die, which I'm sure you, many of us have assets that are already out to pasture. We're just letting them just, just letting old Betsy keel over. Um, so kind of to sum all this up, when investing in crypto assets, it's crucial to consider a variety of metrics to assess the potential for growth and success. Um, and using the five T's, meaning evaluating the team behind the project, the timing of its launch, the technology that's being utilized, the tokenomic structure, and just why token, the purpose of the token, it provides a really valuable insight into, um, the viability of that project. And so by analyzing those metrics, you can make a somewhat, again, a somewhat informed decision and maximize the chances of achieving, you know, more favorable returns, which, you know, you want more currency units. So the next time you come across a cryptocurrency, do your five T's. And you should do the five T's for every single project that you own. If you own it and you can't explain it, that's a problem. If you own it and you haven't done the five T's, that's also a problem. Because by going through this, you're going to know how much of this or that you want to own. And you may decide you don't want to own it. It might be time to get rid of it, to lighten the load, the proverbial load. Anyway, um, can you share the link? Yes, it's easy. It's at the top of the screen right here, www nickblacknext.com there you go all right um we'll see you tomorrow for digital investor uh stay in school don't do drugs don't do anything my poor insolvent drunk strong on meth grandmother would not do uh understand um that if you have if you're frustrated if this stuff frustrates you th that's pretty normal um but you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to invest in anything. You can spend some time banging around this space and learning. There's a lot of, there's a lot of data and information out there. And you can just learn for a while before you put currency units to work, learn, build your education, be brilliant at the basics. Okay.
Uh, for those of you that are, are curious about Digital Investor, there's the website, nickblacknext.com. You get it. Super squirrel stuff. Um, for node licenses, you can either go to Nick Black Next, go to the store, or you can go to nodemarket.io. That is where we will be building not only the secondary marketplace, but a full OTC exchange where you'll be able to take any tokens and you'll be able to go in there. And if you don't want to do an on-exchange transaction, which again, rich people never use exchanges, ever. I'm going to tell you this clearly. It's all OTC. I'm not saying you can only use it if you're rich, but the point is <laughs> people don't go to Coinbase or Kraken to do real transactions. That's just bullshit signaling, all right? And that's just when people, it's usually when people are trying to move markets. You do stuff OTC, one wallet to the next. It'll all be smart contract based. So there you go. Um, and for those of you that have signed up for the newsletter, um, let me go over here. Um, for those of you on the, that have the newsletter, um, we're sending out an email that has the, um, it's a Google Docs, form that you fill out to get the hyper to get on the list for the hyper AI boxes. Whew, look at all that we did. Woo woo. And I'm up out. I got to go to the gym, bro. I got to get ready for Hollywood horror nights. These 18 miles aren't going to walk themselves. If you're an accredited investor and you want in on angel, seed round, or early round equity and token opportunities in the artificial intelligence and cryptocurrency space, schedule an interview at nickblacknext.com. In life, you can either be really good, really lucky, or just be first. Being first is so much easier. Schedule a digital private client interview today at nickblacknext.com. Yes. Office hours, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. 